Hello everyone. So this um, class concerned with DC motors and servos and seeing how they work and uh, discovering how to code them. So I just run this here as a side show. So here we have a 180 degree servo motor. And it's essentially just a plastic case which contains um, gears, the printed board, amplifier, and there's a feedback potentiometer as well within this. So it's a potentiometer, is just a variable resistor. We can uh, change resistance by um, moving the potentiometer. So uh, these have stop ends which prevent too much travel at the servo. So it can only um, rotate 180 degrees in either direction. That's the maximum we can do with that. Uh, at the base of the servo body are the wires, the three which connect to the microprocessor or micro bit um, board. There's an, an extra board that I'll show you now in a second. Uh, these are positive, negative, and signal. So we have three volts, which is usually the red there, the red wire that you see. Uh, the brown is the signal that will be varying in voltage. And then the earth then is uh, the third wire. So what we do is, I can just save this one here, and I'll go into the micro bit here. So what do we do then when we need to um, code this? So. What we can do is go into inputs and, and have something happening on, on the pressing of a of button A. So something will happen when we press button A. And um, what we do here is use the pins command and we go in here to server right pin P0 to something. So we start off at zero with that. So when we do put this in, we automatically get a virtual server here on the left hand side. That servo there can be controlled um, to 90 or 180 degrees, depending on which way this is coded here. So uh, at the minute, I, uh, at the press of button A, I just have it stationary. So what I can do is duplicate that, go in here, something happened on button B, duplicate, and something happened then on the press of A and B together. So we have 380 here. So we can change this here to 90. And this one here to 150, say. Let's load now for a second. So what will happen here now is we have our um, signal wire coming from pin zero. The constant three volts supply is coming from that three volt pin and ground is here. So those are what I was talking about. So on the signal wire will allow this to vary um, the direction of the of this arm here. So it'll be around it, it can actually move completely to the right here in center position or to the left. So I'll show you to simulate this here now. So that's 90. And if we press A and B, it goes to 150. Now we didn't say 180, we could, we could have said 180 here. And um, I just put it to 150 just for simulation purposes. But it can go to 180, there's no problem there. Um, and be at maximum then. As you see now in a second, don't want to press A, nothing happens. When I press B, it goes to 90, A and B, it goes to 180, to the full extent. When I press B, I can bring it anti clockwise back around to 90 degrees. And I press A, I can turn anti clockwise back around to zero to uh, the start position. And um, I've just thought something there when it depends on uh, which way this is wired, actually, it, it, 
when I pressed B there, it went to 90 degrees, and A and B, it went to 180. That's actually in a clockwise direction. We turn in a clockwise direction when we're going back to um, the start position. We're, we're going clockwise. So we're going anti clockwise then 90, 180. So that's um, the 180 degree servo motor in action there. So we'll go back to the presentation now. Um, the 360 degree servo is something slightly different. Um, with the 360 degree servo motor, it looks the exact same as the 180 degree. We need to, um, we use a different Lewis code or it's, um, it's controlled completely differently to the 180 degree. So what we have here is pulse width modulation, PWM control, um, for controlling this, this particular servo motor. So unlike the 180 degree servo, varying the pulse between one milliseconds and two milliseconds varies the direction of rotation and rotation speed at which the servo travels. So in essence, what we have is, um, we still have the scale of zero to 180, but this is the hardest part to understand. We actually map that onto the 360 degree servo. So we use a scale on, on the 360 degree. So it's a bit hard to understand this one, but we'll get there when we just stop and think. So I just go back to the um, micro bit program here for a second. I just want to show you something else that has to be done here now. We get rid of them. So in some uh, situations, the, um, the motor can be a higher voltage that's used in the workshop. Sometimes we can use motors that um, use more than three volts. So what we can do is here is go into extensions. I already have it done now, but you go into extensions in the microbit, all in one robotics. That's an extra robotic port, but I already have it in here, and uh, it comes in then as robotics here. That's what happens. So, when we're working this, then we can go into on button A pressed and uh, duplicate that again, and duplicate it again. So, B, A, and B. And what we're going to this time then is we're going to robotics here. We're going to servos. So then we say set servo one. That's um, actually depending on you can go from servo one to eight. So we say it's different servos on the, on the board, on the robotics board. I'll show you that now in a second on the PowerPoint slides. And um, so we'll, we'll duplicate this one here. Duplicate it again. So if we set servo servo one to zero degrees, this time there's no simulation. But when we set servo one to zero degrees, what we're doing is we're moving at full speed in the clockwise direction on a 360 degree servo. I just leave that thought for a second now. Um, I'm just going to put it 90 here and here on um, button B when we press button B nothing actually happens servo stopped to that stage it, it doesn't do anything if we hit button B in this particular situation when we press button A and B the servo will move anti-clockwise at full speed so that's what will happen if you download this code to the micro bit you can see this in action i don't have a micro bit here with me at the minute but if you want to download this like we did before you're going to download x from that 
going to this. I don't have it now because in my files because it's um it's, it's just called microbit in the files and you drag this folder uh, this into the folders into the microbit folder and then that downloads to the actual um the physical microbit itself. So what we need to do now next is let's go back to the PowerPoint side here and that. Um, those actions that we're talking about for, um, when we press the, 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 the 90 or button B at 90 degrees, it, it, the, it's just stopped. The servo doesn't know anything. Um, as I said before, when we press button A, the servo will move in the clockwise direction at full speed. If we put some other value in into, into the microbit program here, if we put say um, 30 into that, and we put 150 in here, and then in that case is the motor will turn anti-clockwise at medium speed when we press button A and B together. When we press only button B, the microbit will or the motor will turn clockwise um, at a medium speed. So it'll turn clockwise at a medium speed here, and at this one it'll turn anti-clockwise at a medium speed. And this line of code is run. And we download it and run it. If you have your own microbit at this stage, maybe you should pause this video and try and do that. Because it was beneficial to actually see how this works. When we get back into the class, we'll be going through this in fine detail anyway to see because this, this will be part of the digital mode project. So that's that part now. I'll just go back to the PowerPoint again. There's an application as there was here. So it's a wheelchair accessible car. That's um, a link to the video. You can check it out there. Um, it just shows the application of servo motors to do lift the doors and Control the wheelchair and um, accessible ramp and that for the person. This board here is um, used to control servo motors and DC motors. So the three wires that we saw up here on, the, on this uh, 180 degree servo, three pins here, those three pins click onto SV1 here and that's servo one. When I mentioned earlier on servo one to servo eight, I was referring to these pins. 